A few years back, I was a shift manager for a local big box pharmacy and convenience store. It was right across my backyard and I could probably sprint there in under a minute if I really wanted to, so it really worked out for me. I was in my late 30s. I worked out quite a lot and while I was fit, I was still a smaller girl. Even though I was married, I would constantly get hit on and asked out. It was pretty flattering, but it always made me feel really awkward. Now, this particular store I worked at was in a really weird part of town. It was on the right side of town to attract the Karens, but close enough to the not-so-good side of town to attract the drug addicts, drunks, and psychopaths. Anyway, let me say that I'm not someone that gets scared easily. I've had someone high on meth crash their car into the side of the store, causing the back of our store to bend inward because we didn't carry pineapple juice. I had a man pick me up and throw me over his shoulder and start walking out the door with me, saying that I'd make a good wife. Yeah, that's one for another time. Anyways, it all started on a Sunday morning. I remember this because I was really busy building end caps and making cell signs. I was working with my favorite coworker, so the day was flying by and I was really bubbly this day. There was a man and his son that came into the store and they made a beeline for me. The man was probably just a little under six foot and he was skinny. The man had dreadlocks and a long skinny silver earring dangling from his ear. He also had this really tan trench coat that I found really odd because it was summer. Nonetheless though, I had then greeted them and asked if they needed some help. The man spoke with a really thick Jamaican accent, and he said that his GPS stopped working, and he wanted to see if we had any. I let out a really small laugh, thinking he was messing with me. Uh, no, that would be at Best Buy or something, but we do have a small section of electronics on this wall over here. I indicated the wall to the back of me. Oh, thanks, he said, taking a look but also keeping his eyes on me. Something about those eyes just really chilled me. He was speaking another language to his son, but I kept going on about my task for the day, and he would call me to help him, asking me questions about chargers and SD cards. I answered them, and then he started telling me how beautiful I was. Really awkwardly, I had thanked him. You must work out, yeah? He asked. Um, yeah, yoga mostly. I replied while getting more and more uncomfortable now. He made some more comments about my body telling me how he loved my tattoos and he was just really being a creep. I tried to stay polite though and eventually I just walked away to do some more work. I started to avoid him but he was still staring at me. The man had his phone out and I kept hearing the shuddering of a camera. I went to the office to tell my other coworker that I thought the guy was taking my picture and I was just really feeling uncomfortable. He then came out and watched over me. Shortly after my coworker came out, the man and his son then left. By the time the end of my shift came, I forgot about him. A few weeks later, I was up front ringing customers with a different coworker. We were crazy busy that day, but I was the manager on duty. After we got the line down, my coworker then handed me an envelope. Uh, what's this? I asked her. I don't know, some man in dreadlocks told me to give it to you, she said. I took the envelope and I went into my office with it. Inside of the envelope were dozens and dozens of pictures of me. My heart sank. I had no idea that these were taken. Most of them were of me in the store while working some of me walking home, and some even with me and my daughter. I felt sick. There was also a note with it. It said something along the lines of, You're so beautiful. I'm in love with you. I'd be a much better husband than what you have now. Please give me a chance. There was more to it, but it's in police evidence now. The guy really stupidly left his name and address. I then called our store manager as well as the police. They took our camera footage, my statement, and the pictures and letter. They told him that he really needed to stay away from me or the next time he's getting arrested and he's banned from the store. I was really relieved but still really bothered by it. A few more weeks to about a month then went by. It was another really busy Sunday night. 
It was just myself as the manager on duty, and we had another coworker as my cashier. We were ringing things up together when I noticed a man staring at me. The man was tall with a medium build. He had dreadlocks and he had the same earring and long trench coat as the other man did. This man was really scary. His eyes were just cold and really dead and angry. It felt like they were staring right through my soul. He didn't have anything to purchase, just stood and stared. I tried to smile politely at him, then another wave of customers came. I got lost in helping everyone, but didn't see the man anymore. Even when things calmed down, I still didn't see him. I decided to go start facing the back of the store, and I told my coworker to call me if she needed me. As I was back there, I heard that Jamaican accent and all over. I looked up at the mirror to see that same scary man on the phone. Yeah, she's here. No, it's just one other girl here with her. I can grab her when she leaves. No problem. I was absolutely horrified. He didn't see me, so I slowly made my way up to the front. I briefly tell my coworker what's going on and then call the police and store manager. The cops took him away. A few days later, a detective came to speak to me. The two men were brothers. They were abducting women and actually using them for human trafficking. He told me I was really lucky. I later found out that they had apparently found a woman beaten to death in their apartment. They have both since gone to prison. This still gives me really bad nightmares. What happened to that woman could have easily been me. But thank God it wasn't. Anyway, 지금, 지금, right now. I'm going. 